your super friend. Your super friend. Welcome to the first ever episode of Dan and Josh Super Friends. Excellent. Excellent to be here. This is the first episode. This is, uh, this is an exciting time for for you. Yes, you might have, <laughs> you might have seen some of our other reviews that have the three of us or Matt and me. Yeah. But this is the first one with Dan and Josh. Exactly. And what is our title for today, Dan? For We're gonna be going over what is the name of this movie? I think actually? it's uh, Legend, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. I want to just call it Headless Horseman, but that's not what it is. <laughs> the Legend of Sleepy Hollow. We're doing the Disney version. We're going chronological order. Disney. Disney. I mean, I'm sure there's like some black and white silent film that was made before this. So, uh, we'll show a clip. The reason why I want to discuss this is because obviously Halloween season. Hopefully it's out by that time. We don't know. You will know. No way that's gonna happen. Yeah, you'll know. <laughs> you'll know at the ha Halloween of 2019. <laughs> <laughs> we want to do uh, different interpretations of Headless Horseman throughout film, and we're starting out with yeah. Headless Horseman. I think it's like in the 50s. I think yeah, I, I th wrote down 55. I think it's 55. So. Well, I'm not entirely <laughs> sure because I was looking up Washington Irving, who's the, the mm -hmm. author who wrote, um, you know, Sleepy Hollow and What's that weird name? I always forget that other guy. Rip Van Winkle. I always forget him. He wrote him too. And he lives in the New York area. If you don't know, Backyard Productions is from New York. Yeah, we're in the Hudson Valley, so we're pretty so close this, to uh, Yeah, we're really close to Sleepy Hollow where this, this legend takes place. Right, right. Also, Rip Van Winkle. Isn't that like... There's like a... Bri yeah, I mean, uh, Washington Irving, he wrote both of those like like classic, you know, New York tales, American tales. These are like pretty much our like like our literature, you know, of the Americas. You know, our first. Uh, yeah, it's cool too because like Wolfman, Gilman, you know, Dracula, Frankenstein. Those are like monsters yeah. you know, from other places. But uh, Headless Horseman, from where we. Yeah, from. he's local. He's the local guy. The local. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which is cool, you know. And uh, so Disney Animated Studios, I guess. I, I, I always wanted to watch the behind the scenes of this and like how they made it, but I couldn't find anything. The only thing I could find is like, uh, I guess they made an animated short before they would play the video. I was just looking, mm -hmm. I just found it during my research of it and like uh, Disney, it was like a, it was an animated feature Disney would uh, show like before the, the feature itself. But some of us may be less familiar with the man who created the legend of Sleepy Hollow and whose literary genius brought him international recognition as America's first professional man of letters. So, before presenting our version of Sleepy Hollow, we'd like to take just a few minutes to tell the story of the author, Washington Irving. And it would be Washington Irving, like, going through his life and everything, like a basic, like, kind of, like, biography. I was born in the city of New York, April the 3rd, 1783. The year the Revolutionary War ended. And I was like, huh, this is interesting, you know, and uh, and then it just like, I guess he lived in New York City and then he traveled to Europe and then he eventually came to small rural Americas, you know, and New York. And uh, I think Ichabod Crane was a real person, you know, he faced yeah, like the schoolmaster on a real actual uh, person who did exist. I'm sure, I'm not... I'm not sure if he looked like a scarecrow in real life, <laughs> you know. But he definitely does in this version, in the Disney version. Yeah. Wait, so this movie is like really short. You know? Yeah, it's only 30 minutes. I often wandered down back streets and through strange neighborhoods, seeking out old abandoned houses which were said to be haunted. It looked pretty similar to the feature itself, like more. Oh. I like when Disney does like human characters because I don't know. It just looks like animals are more. I think they're more easy. To yeah, animate. they're um, in the very beginning of the movie. They show a couple animated animals. 
dogs, and I was like, oh no. <laughs> what, what, they what, what were they? They were just like, oh, the dogs. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I but they're know. barely in it, you know? You just yeah. see them, like, for two seconds, like, drink beer out of a barrel. <laughs> you know, in the beginning, I love that. And, uh, like, I like how it shows the map of, like, uh, you know, Hudson River. I'm like, oh, look, there's yeah, us. Man. We're yeah, right they're there. Like, they're, like, <laughs> they're like, along the Hudson River. It's yeah. very different. <laughs> so that's the first part. Right. This entire movie is done through, like, narration. Yeah, which is Bing Crosby, by the way. He was, Bing Crosby. He was saying, uh, I'm dreaming of a white Christmas, you know, which is really cool. What, did he do all the music for it, too? He did the singing, uh, the Headless Horseman song. He definitely oh, sang okay. that, you know, which is narration. Yeah, so, there, there's no dialogue in the movie at all. No, which I love. I love that, cool. I love that part about it. You know, that's like one of my favorite elements. This is like one of my favorite Disney things. <laughs> Even though it's like it's just like such a short little story, but I think it wraps up yeah. so well. And like you know what I like like uh the beginning when they sing that Ichabod Crane song, you know, you're like, Who's that guy? La, la, la. <laughs> you know? Um and it shows like uh it foreshadows like that he's afraid of uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. He you know, spooks and, and all that stuff. He's like trying not to be like a boy to ladder. Right, and the cat. Yeah. The cat. <laughs> yeah, I love how they set that up in the beginning. Yeah. And, then, and then later on, you know, that's, you, know, you find out that. He's, but what's what's the word for you? Superstitious. Yeah, yeah he's superstitious. They definitely like knew what what the movie was about, you know? Right. They set it all up and they didn't. It, it wasn't like confused. The movie's an hour and yeah, it's yeah, focused, exactly. It's focused on it. Yeah, exactly. It's focused. It's like well tight, you know, tighten up like a nice little bow. And the animation's like, I mean, it's Disney. It's I was I was pretty amazed because I thought it was like a short film, like sort of like a budget Disney. Yeah, movie, but no. the animation was pretty yeah, advanced. Yeah, exactly. It's like top notch Disney, like big, like uh, you know, out of any other feature at that time, the animation would look as good, you know. Yeah, uh, it did seem like. Um, Rom was very similar to Gaston. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it took me later on to put that connection together because I would watch porn videos, you know, uh, when I was a kid. You uh, know? Yeah, yeah, So I, I came up with those connections now. It's funny that, you know, I think the same way. Yeah. So like when they first introduced Brom, he's like really strong. He's like got the barrel. Right. He's like filling all the beers mm -hmm. with it. <laughs> yeah, he's like the town hero, you know, he's basically like. The, you know, the ladies man, like, no one's gonna yeah. get past him, you know, and then he, here comes a skinny, like, school teacher, you know, he, he uses his intellect to, like, uh, combat Bron Bones, which no one has even, like, attempted to even, like, Stepped on his territory. Yeah, you know? <laughs> and, like, I mean, that's the, that's the whole plot of the movie, yeah. is that, um, you know, Rom, well, there's a girl in it. Um, Katrina Van Tassel. Katrina Van Tassel. Who's the richest of blonde in all, <laughs> all of the land. Everybody wants, right. uh, wants Katrina, and uh, the two of them sort of battle, uh, like Popeye and. Yeah, I forget his name. Yeah. <laughs> Rudo. Rudo. My dad's in the other room, he's like. Brutus. <laughs> so the other room. The whole movie there is the two of these guys like competing to try to get between them. Yeah, I like that. But like, instead of like Popeye where, I mean, I guess Popeye does use a little of the smarts. I feel like that's more like physical. Yeah, and he's using like his intellect to like overpower this like, oh, well, his name is Brawn Bone. So like, <laughs> and so he's overpowering his Brawn, you know, and all, all the people around, you know, are infatuated with Katrina and like how she looks. You know her family fortune <laughs> with the farm, and I, I just like how he's like thinking about it, and then like it's all, like all the crops and everything like turn into cash, and the farm <laughs> just like, explodes. That's what, my favorite what, part what, of the whole cool. movie because he's like he's like she's really pretty and all that, <laughs> but damn, there's a lot of money in there. <laughs> right, so it's a win-win for him, and it just shows how shallow he is as a character, which I like. You know, <laughs> he's not very likable. No, he's not at all. Because he's like. I, I thought it was crazy when they mentioned like he's a ladies man and all the ladies are like around him when he's singing. Right, right, right. I was like, what? Because <laughs> they, they make a point to mention he's ugly as hell. Right, right. You know, he's freaky looking. He, he looks like a bird. And stuff, yeah, he but... does look like a scarecrow. <laughs> yeah. So I couldn't believe that like the that he's also a ladies man. Yeah, you know? I think because of his intellect though. I think he has like a smart and his singing. Ability. Right, and his singing abilities. <laughs> you know, he has different like aspects that like other people in the town don't have because he's like from like schooling and everything like that. He has like some of, of like a learning upbringing. Where does uh where does he come from? He's not from. He's not from. I'm not exactly sure. They don't mention somewhere. it. They might mention it in the book. I haven't read the book. But I, uh, 
watching from Earth. I think in the in the Tim Burton one that we'll review in a little bit later, right. video, I think that he's like from Manhattan or something. Yeah, yeah. So that, I mean, that would make sense. So, I mean, Washington Irving was from Manhattan, so that might be it. There's a, <laughs> you know, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's just it's just basically like a love triangle, like and how like mm -hmm. he combats him with his intellect, you know, instead of like his, you know, instead of physical way. So yeah, you know, I, I like that. I like that fact. Of, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and the animation's really great, and I love like oh, speaking of big. Bing Crosby in the beginning, um, like now you have a classic Christmas song with Bing Crosby. Now you have a classic Halloween song to tie with Bing Crosby. <laughs> so play that on your Halloween stations during this time of year. When the spoons are having a jamboree, they break it up with English glee. Ghosts are bad, but the one that's cursed is the headless horseman. He's the worst. I mean, uh, no one really knows about it, but <laughs> yeah. it's the same. I was actually you know, pretty thing. surprised that, like, I've never heard any of these songs before, because the songs are pretty good. Yeah, I like the Ichabod song. It's just like, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know I, I really like that. Yeah. Um, There's a couple good songs. And, and also, like, the only time you ever get to hear the characters, like, you know, they open their mouth and the sound comes out is in the songs. Yeah, and in the songs and yeah, the only well, the only time with that big plump girl that he's like uh, teaching how to sing in the beginning, and they pass out because he howled like a dog because Bron Bones, you know, like overdubbed it, <laughs> you know. But uh, she later plays a part with like uh, basically, uh, I almost guess uh, Ichabod <laughs> wins over Katrina. And uh, yeah. Braun Bones is at the dance, and he's just sitting there, you know, well, I'm beaten this time, you know, this is the first time he's ever been beaten. And then, like, that plump girl sitting by herself on the, on the side, you know, like, at any, uh, like, high school prom or anything yeah. like that, high school dance. And, like, they end up dancing, and he's trying to, like, switch off, like, Katrina and, and that, that lady. And that, what I like about that is, like, that lady has... It's like has no observation whatsoever that he does not want to dance with her at all. You know, he's like holding her like this, like where do I put her? And he throws her like into a closet, but and like before he's just like you know just yeah. trying to get rid of her all, all stakes, and she's just like woo, and then she just comes out of nowhere, yeah, and, like grabs her, and, like it's just like bouncing around with him. You know, uh, it's pretty great. Yeah. Like I like the like the timing of everything like, with it. Everything's time. Yeah, I mean, so it's it's great. like it's yeah, it's the perfect Disney stuff where they're the physical comedy. And right, the, right. Just like yeah, the timing of the physical comedy, the timing of like the story beats and everything like that. I think it's mm -hmm. like very fluid, and there's nothing that really like. Yeah, I was really interested while well, watching it uh, because you know the only other version I had seen was the Tim Burton one. Mm -hmm. And uh, that one's more of a mystery, you right. know? And then this one is like, there's not really any mystery. You don't even know about the Headless Horseman. Yeah, we didn't even get into the Headless Horseman, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, like, the whole sort of point of this is sort of the love triangle. Yeah. And then, um, Bron, Bron, Grimm. Mr. Bones. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, he, he uses his intellect at the end there. He knows that... Yeah. Uh, on Korean is superstitious. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then he sings a like Bing Crosby Man. classic Halloween song that everyone hears on the radio this time of year. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it, you know, it's, I just love the imagery and everything, like the shadows he casts, you know, when he's singing the song. And then eventually, Ichabod goes walking on his horse gunpowder, which is like a weak, straggly horse. Yeah. Looks pretty much just like him if he was a horse. <laughs> you know. And then like I love how they. The, the use of sound with like uh, the like the crickets, the frogs, you know, the like mm -hmm. cactus plants, you know, hitting on the rock, and he like thinks like all these things are coming after him, but it's just shadows in the night, and like you know, average everyday things that you would come across, you know, going through the trails of upstate New York, you know, so like it's just everyday things, and he, he thinks the worst of it, you know, and then like he has a laugh. And that's when the audience has a chance to breathe. Laughs, yeah, laughs too. yeah, and then the audience is kind of with them. He's like, haha, you know, they're laughing too. And then right when the headless horseman comes, you're like, whoa, you know, and the music like it's like, like builds it up, you know, and you see this massive like image of the headless horseman yeah. with the red behind him, like that's so like, I just love that image, you know, like he's like, oh, yeah, he's like, cool. I like, I, I like um, what the 
the swordsman looks like. Like he, he's got that like purple cape. Yeah, like, like purple he's, red cape. Yeah, he's yeah. Badass. Um, also, like I feel like it works well in animation. You know, like his headlessness is in the in the movie. You know, you kind of sense that they had to like animate a head out. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah, you know what's interesting about that? I mean, like pretty much the story is like. You could pick, take it as that's brawn bones or that's an actual headless horseman. It's up to you, like your inter interpretation of it and everything. But the interesting thing is when they la like the headless horseman laughs at Ichabod when they first like kind of crash into each other, and then he looks into like his head hole, mm -hmm. and then he like gets even more scared because he doesn't see a head in there. <laughs> so like either like there's no head at all, or brawn bones is really good at. Cons seeing his head <laughs> and making it look like it was chopped in off. In animation, you never know. Yeah. But. That's why, I, you know, I love that, you know, like yeah. it's, it's just like, you, you don't know, you know, and a lot of people have tr problems with that. Like my sister, she, like we would watch it, you know, when we were younger and she, she's like, I want to know, is he dead? I want him to live. And I'm like, well, he's kind of like an asshole. So like, it doesn't really matter <laughs> like if he yeah. survives. I mean, yeah, the, I, the ending is very ambiguous. Yeah. And I, I was confused about it because mm -hmm. I, I, they say that they found his hat. I thought they said they found his head, which makes it <laughs> Yeah, different. and it's hard, it's different when you're not looking at the screen and you're just looking at the audio. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was uh, our Disney review of Headless Horseman. Yeah. Uh, Sleepy Hollow Legend, Sleepy Hollow. Oh, uh, another thing I want to drop in, this would be a double feature with the Mr. Toad or whatever it was. I never watched oh, it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, yeah always, sense. I always skip the Mr. Toad like movie or just not watch it and I, I watched it like years later you know and then I was like yeah okay I seen it now I don't have to see it ever again I just watched the Hello Swordsman thing <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I do gotta say though um, that you know him being such an unlikable character and then in the end uh, I mean we kind of spoiled it right now. yeah yeah um, Ichabod doesn't end up with Katrina the bad guy, mm -hmm. you know, ends Bron up... Bron Bones. But he's not really... Bron Bones isn't really a bad guy in the, in the flick. I guess so. He's just like... He's just the town hero, and like, he just has his comeuppance with, you yeah, know, no, the you're school you're teacher. Right, right. You know, he never really does anything harmful. Or he only gets back at Ichabod because, you know, he's just, you know, stepping on, like, what, you know... Yeah. Bron Bones is, you know, his area, his face, you know. Just like crosses him in the wrong way. And that, yeah. That's the only reason why he tries to combat him. It's just a weird thing for them to like set up a love triangle and then like Popeye doesn't end up getting olive oil. Yes. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is. I mean, I like it though. That's what I like about yeah. it. Yeah. It subverts expectations on like The Last Jedi where they, they have a <laughs> setup for it instead of just like throwing it out the window, you know? Just throw it. Oh, we wrote this up. Just throw it over here, you know? It was already. This was already pleased pre-established in the script, everything was meticulously written and pinpointed. Like, what well, was gonna happen. Yeah, and I don't think Ichabod's totally unlikable. I think he's only unlikable if you analyze it and like think really yeah. deep in it. When you're like kind of playing along with the character, you're like, I like this guy. I want him no, to win. No, exactly. Like, Especially because like in the beginning, he like doesn't slap the kid. Mm -hmm. He like he eats their food. Yeah, <laughs> and, like, <laughs> friends the kid so that yeah. he could have food with their parents, which is genius. <laughs> right. You know so. No, I mean, I, I don't mean that he's like an unlikable character, he just doesn't do the, you know. He's not like the hero type, which I like, because yeah. he's just like an average guy yeah. so who's just trying to get, like, everything to benefit him. Which, yeah, I mean, technically, everyone's kind of doing that in some way, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, th I think yeah. that's the best way to sum this up. Well, we'll yeah. see you at the next Super Friends Dan and Josh episode of hopefully another Sleepy Hollow thing or something else. Man, I'm getting out of here. <laughs>